Hey friends, as with most all of my videos, I try to bring new creative opportunities for musicians using Ableton Live. Staying on the cutting edge of what's possible can help you achieve that sonic novelty that we musicians are always striving for. One of Ableton 11's most powerful features is not very well known, and in my opinion, it's extremely underutilized. I'm referring to the MPE, or MIDI Polyphonic Expression features added to Ableton 11. This one feature can create brand new types of notes and sound design tricks, and the best part is, you don't need an MPE controller or an Ableton push to take advantage. In fact, all users of Ableton 11 can flex this new feature and push their music to new places. Let's get it. So when Ableton 11 came out, I was a bit surprised at how little attention the new MPE features got. I think it's because the assumption is, is that you have to have a specialized MPE controller to actually use the MPE features. But the rad thing is that MPE information is stored in clips, so you can actually do all kinds of wild new things just by using Ableton's piano roll under a new section called Note Expression. Let me play you an example of some of the novel things that you can do. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's a hastily assembled EDM jam that I made using these new Note Expression features. Check it out. Now, some of you might be listening to this and you might feel like, well, what's new about that? I've heard things like this before. But those of you that are listening closely, you probably heard this track right here and you probably heard those notes diverging. These notes were actually diverging from each other and I'm sliding from one chord into a completely different chord. Let's take a listen to just this track. Especially this one right here, take a listen to this. Let's take a closer look at this clip. Now you can see that each one of these notes is sliding to a different position, and you can see that I'm starting this chord as a perfect C major, but I'm sliding into this totally different chord where this note is going down in pitch, this one is going up, and this one is going sideways. And I'll go ahead and in the wavetable, I'll go ahead and we'll turn the modulation down a little bit so you can really hear what's going on. There's a little pitch LFO. So just listen to this, what's happening just in the notes. Now, some of you that are watching this are realizing this is completely novel. This has never been possible before with Ableton. We're taking notes and sliding them from one chord into another chord. The only way that you could have done this prior to now is to create three different tracks and take each one of these notes and change the pitch bend information. But now you can do it all within the same track within the same instrument. And that's all because of this tab right here, the MPE tab within Wavetable. Okay, so let's take a look at another example of this. I'm just gonna go to session view over here and I've got a clip and as you can see in this clip, we have the same situation where we're pitch bending each note separately from each other. This D uh, sharp is remaining the same but the rest of these are moving into different chords. Let's take a listen to this. And to me, the creative opportunity in just being able to pitch bend notes within a held chord are just unbelievably awesome. I mean, this is already really cool, but this gets so much better, all right? So what we're gonna do is, I wanna show you how this is accomplished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new MIDI track and we're gonna build this from scratch. Now, at the moment, there are two Ableton instruments that support MPE or note expression, and that's sampler and wavetable. We're just gonna focus on wavetable today and I'm dragging Wavetable in here, and if I scroll over to the MPE tab over here, we can see that there are already some pre-existing mappings, okay? We can see that note pitch bend is plus 48 at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recreate what I just did by recording a chord. So let's go ahead and do that first. Okay, so here's my chord. I'm just straightening up real quick. And now I've got this chord here on this clip. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up for visibility, okay? I'm just gonna get a little bit more zoomed in here. And as you can see, there are multiple tabs on this side when you're dealing with the piano roll. The first one is obviously the clip launch 
uh, side where you determine how this is going to behave when you're launching the clip. The second one is notes, okay, and that's where the no normal notes are contained, and you can see what we've got here. Then there's envelopes. This has to do with automation inside of the clip, so automation and modulation for parameters. And then, of course, the final one, this is the new one, this is note expression, okay? I don't know why they decided to go with note expression as the term instead of just MPE, but essentially this is where you deal with all the MPE parameters, all right? So at the moment, you can see that there are one, two, three, four different little icons here, and as you click on them, you can bring up different aspects of what's available with MPE. But for now, I'm gonna just close all these down, and you'll notice that all four of these notes are selected. If I just select one, if I'm in note expression, we can see this line right here. Now what this line represents is essentially the center pitch of this note. Right now it says zero ST, that means zero steps. So what I can do is I can go to each one of these notes and I can pitch bend them around by making breakpoints in the same way that you would do modulation or automation in Ableton, very simple stuff. Now let's go ahead and start with this lower note mm -hmm. down here. Something that might make this easier for me is to turn off the other notes or mute them by using zero. Mm -hmm. So I'll click on this note, hit zero, mm -hmm. this one, and this one. So now all we hear is this G sharp. So maybe the first thing I'll do is I'll go down one step with this G sharp. Now you'll notice that it says 1.01. .01. It's very difficult to get exactly on the exact steps. But that's what's so fun about this. When you're using a polyphonic, an MPE instrument, it's really difficult to get your fingers to go exactly right on the note. And that's what's so cool about this. So really you can get that kind of like microtonal kind of thing going on here. Um, but let's say you really want to get that accurate. All you have to do is hold shift and then any of your adjustments can be very fine. See that? So now I'm on exactly one step down. So let's take a listen to this. And maybe I'll go back up here up to yeah, just one, just back to our original pitch. Now I can go to the next note, hit zero. Maybe I'll go down two steps here. I don't know what chord I'm forming. I'm just kind of jamming. I'm not really sure how this is going to turn out. I'm just having some fun. Sounds good thus far. Maybe this one will go up instead, and that's this is where the novelty happens. Because you know, before I could just maybe use like a pitch bend to do this, right? But but this is <laughs> this is essentially four different people using a pitch bend at the same time. You understand? So I'm gonna make sure I turn this note on, and now I can go maybe up. Maybe I'll go up to this other note's pitch. So up four and back down. I'm gonna guess this is probably three. <laughs> Love it, so much fun. And maybe this one will go down two. And this one will go down one. And this lowest note, go down five. <laughs> now, Wavetable is already set up for this to work, okay? Let's go look at Wavetable again. As you can see, we already have our note pitch bend set to plus 48. If you want this to correlate exactly with Ableton's piano roll, this has to be at plus 48. If I have this, for example, at some other level, like 13.5, listen. <laughs> it gets all warbly and bad. Right? So, by default, Wavetable is set up with a note pitch bend to do pitch bend stuff polyphonically inside of the note expression tab in any clip in Ableton Live, right? Now, it's not just Wavetable that has this capability, there's Sampler, there's also all kinds of VST instruments that can be addressed with MPE information, but you have to set them up inside of their matrices, okay? So let's take a listen to another example where we're taking advantage of the matrix here to open and close the filter frequency. Take a listen to this. <laughs> And I just want to say real quick that if you're enjoying my teaching style with this video, I offer Ableton Live online courses that are extremely thorough, 
designed to bring you from zero to hero with Ableton Live very quickly. To my knowledge, these are the longest, most thorough courses that you can buy on Ableton Live on the internet. So enrolling in my courses gives you lifetime access to 25 hours and growing of content in each one of these courses. You also get access, lifetime access, to our really awesome Discord that is just growing on the daily. We're having so much fun in there. If that's something that you're interested in, check the link up here. It's also down in the description and comments. Let's get back to it. Now, to me, this is a really, really awesome creative opportunity. What's happening here is that we're simply opening and closing the filter frequency for each note individually. Let's take a look at the clip. So right here, we have one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and get rid of this lowest note. and We can listen more in depth. So what's happening is that each one of these notes is opening the, and closing the filter at different times, creating this beautiful drone. So we're in the note expression tab, but we can't see anything being edited. So what I need to do is I need to open one of these tabs. This tab that I'm using is actually pressure. So if I pull this up, we can see this cool little <laughs> geometric craziness happening here. And this is just simply the different notes opening and closing. I'll go ahead and select these three notes and turn them off with zero. And let's just focus on this G we can see that the filter frequency starts low and goes up high, goes down low, up high again. Take a listen. Right? Let's go ahead and add the second one. You could think of this in some ways as if we have four different LFOs with completely editable shapes happening in this clip. Let's go ahead and turn them all back on. Amazing. Let's go ahead and build this up from scratch. It's very simple. So I'm going to open this up. We're going to grab a wavetable, drop it in here. This time, what I'd like to do is choose maybe a more harmonic waveform. Go with complex. Maybe we'll reach for transformations. And I'll just record a quick chord. Okay, there's my chord. Let's take a look at it. And now this time, I'm going to look at note expression and I have pressure. The pressure tab is already opened, right? So now what I can do is I can go into Wavetable and set this up. So whenever you're working with a matrix inside of Wavetable, all you have to do is click on the parameter that you want to edit and it will appear in the matrix. So this matrix, if I click on filter frequency, notice how it appears. The same thing happened in the MPE tab or the MIDI tab, right? It just appears now. This is just how it goes. If I click on the, for example, the wavetable position, there it is. If I click on panning, if I click on, you know, any of this stuff, it just appears, right? So we're gonna work with the filter frequency, all right? So now that the filter frequency is here, I wanna edit it with the pressure, okay? So I'm, not, I'm gonna take it off of warp, even though warp might be pretty sweet too. Let's turn off uh, warp for now, and let's go to just the filter frequency, okay? So I'm gonna make it completely affect this all the way up. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the filter frequency down. Now, why am I doing this? Because this is a bipolar control. If I want to have any control over the filter frequency at 100%, the filter itself needs to be turned down first so that the pressure then takes over control of the, of the frequency, right? So let's go ahead and look at the waveform. And now I can just hover over one of these, right? And I can start to edit away. So I'll go up and then down. And maybe I'll just take this whole time to go up. And now I can just turn off all of these and we're just listening to this G2 note and check it out. Beautiful. So now we can do a different thing, again, a different thing with the second note. So I'll go up, then down. I'll go up again. You can do all these interesting <laughs> geometric things here. Turn this one on. Let's do the same thing, but we'll start in the middle. And as you can see, this is very simple. This process is very, very simple. We're just kind of moving these around and we're recreating a beautiful drone here. Okay, so here's the last note. I'm turning it on. I'm just kind of moving through this a little bit faster so we don't waste time. And I love just like kind of filling up the gaps where they exist, you know? And so the reason that's cool is that we're creating kind of a drone that's always full sounding. Take a listen. And we can hear those different notes coming in and out of the mix and we're kind of undulating a chord, right? This is just so interesting to me. So now we can go back into Wavetable, okay? And we can notice that 
Pressure now has data in it, right? There's literal data living in pressure. And as you can see when I play this, you can see that data coming in and out, right? So we could use that data for something else. Maybe something else we could do is, yeah, we could map warp to it. Let's see what happens when we do that. <laughs> right? Now, even though this is a brand new feature and it's really fun, this is still kind of a basic sound. So maybe something that would complete this is going into a unison mode. Maybe we'll try shimmer this time. <laughs> right? Craziness for days. Awesome. So in this next example, it's getting a little bit more complex where we're using two different parameters with MPE to do two different things. And this is where it really starts to get interesting. Take a listen to this. So if you're ever confused and you want to break this kind of thing down to figure out what's going on, it's very simple. We can see that pressure on this matrix is mapped to the oscillator position, right? So if I look in here and I look at the pressure, we know that these lines are determining where each one of these notes are in the wavetable, right? Pressure to notes, right? And if we go back to the matrix, we can see that slide, however, is mapped to the oscillator panning, right? And even though this is a huge drone, it's a crazy drone that we're listening to, there's no unison mode, right? We're actually just taking each individual note and panning it to different positions. It's just so amazing. So let's go ahead and build this one from scratch. So new MIDI track, wavetable. We're gonna choose a complex wavetable. Let's go with let's go with this one. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this clip over here so that I don't have to make all that polyphonic information again. I'm just gonna copy the clip. So holding option, I'll click and drag, and now we have that same clip in here. But we need to change the mappings. At the moment, slide happens to be on oscillator position, and I want that to be pressure, okay? So I'll double click on there to remove that, and then instead I'll put it on pressure, okay? So now we should be able to navigate this wavetable with pressure. Take a look. Awesome. All right, so that sounds cool. Each one of the notes is going to a different wavetable position. The next thing though that we need to do is map the panning, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say slide is gonna go to panning. So I'll click on panning, and as you can see, it appears down here, and now I will add a negative slide amount to this. And what I need to do is go over to the panning itself and put it all the way to the right. Why is that? Because the slide is going to be pushing the parameter all the way to the other side, right? This is a bipolar control. It's going all the way to the other side and I need to start the panning from the opposite side. That way we have the full range of panning, okay? So let's go in here and let's really take a look at this. So if I go to node expression and I look at slide, let's just look at the slide for now. I'll pull it up a bit. Let's go ahead and just solo out one note. So this one is muted and this one, we're just listening to this first note. Hear how it went the entire range of panning? Let's turn on the other two. Now you can see that all three of these notes are going to all these different crazy places in panning. So of course, if you made a chord progression that had rhythm and it was playing inside of a song, you could do so many amazing things with panning and with all of these other parameters. It's just incredible, right? The, the, the creative opportunity here is, I don't think it can be overstated. Awesome. Well, if Ableton's your thing, it's my thing too. So please consider liking, commenting, subscribing to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.